If there's any fish that any one of the four of us could and would want to catch, it's Arctic char. It's the holy grail. It's the ultimate bad fish of all time. We probably could have gone to any number of places and caught uh, Arctic char in large numbers, but catching a lot of fish wasn't necessarily our goal. We were trying to catch big char and we were trying to catch them pre-spawned, colored up and just beautiful. This was to be the greatest risk of all time. To maybe not even catch a fish at all, maybe get frozen in the late season Arctic, but have a chance of catching that fish of 10 million lifetimes. The Holy Grail is different for everyone. And for us, we have a thing for char. And so these colored up, big, beautiful orange Arctic char were kind of our Holy Grail. first day we caught some of the most beautiful lake trout any of us had ever seen. And that night we got to watch the northern lights in the southern skies of seriously North Canada. Based on the reading that we had done in scientific journal articles and speaking with the biologists, we'd assumed we would have seen lots of Arctic char. But by day three or four, we still had not seen a single char. So we hiked 10 plus miles a day and we basically just kept ourselves busy with lake trout the first seven days because we could not find a single char. So I was obviously super stoked for this trip, but about 60 miles in, I was starting to think, man, what am I doing with these wahoos? We didn't want to make this a hiking film, even though it almost ended up being that. 
we ended up walking 120 miles just trying to find fish walking stopping floating we had Derek in a boat floating out here we were walking this shoreline Sam was over here and we were always just scoping the water it's crystal clear you can see everything but we couldn't see fish the Arctic is always awesome it's such an adventure because you never know what's going to happen we saw grizzly bears on our flight in. We saw Arctic fox right in camp. We saw musk ox and ptarmigan, among lots of other wildlife. And it was just such an amazing experience to see that wildlife so close that we would never have seen otherwise. For us, we arrived, the weather was just beautiful. And all of a sudden the wind came from the north and temperatures dropped and things just got real crazy, real fast. The Arctic has a way of kicking your butt so hard that it humbles you, but it also, well, it just humbles you. We were walking down the shoreline of this lake searching for char, like we've been doing for seven days in a row, and I hear this primal scream, and I'm thinking, what in the world? And I look down the shoreline, and Phil is reaching down and picking something up and he lifts it up and points it to me and it's a human skull and I could not believe what I was looking at. It was so cool to see. It was a little bit creepy too, obviously, but. I thought it was a cool find, but at the same time it was really creepy. And I know that Derek kind of had walked past and beyond because it creeped him out. Phil found this rock that really ended up being a human skull once he dug it out of the ground. And it creeped me out, so I bounced. I just got out of there real fast. And so we reverently put him or her back where we found him and uh, notified the authorities. It really made us question what we were doing and made us question the adventure that became little more adventure than we had bargained for. After days and days of super crazy high winds and really frigid temperatures. We got to the point where we almost broke and we thought we needed to call on a higher power. We're all religious guys and so we ended up kneeling down and praying and just, you know, asking for some help. We often turn to prayer when we are searching for things that we can't find. And the big guy upstairs made it happen. Just hours after we knelt down in prayer, we found our first group of Arctic char. I saw the first road cone under the water and I started shaking. I didn't know what to do. Nobody was around, Phil was clear down there but I just knew that I had to throw a cast in there because we'd been here for eight days and we've been trying to find this fish and I have it right in front of my eyes and I've got to do something. I just throw all my, all my stuff, my bag and stuff on the ground and I fed out line and I've made one cast 20 feet to it and as soon as my fly hit the water, the fish just went for it and just boof, boof, boof and I was stripping, ah, stripping super hard, super fast and as soon as he hit, I just started screaming for Phil. Phil, get down here! And he was like a half mile away. So Phil starts running, and I'm fighting this fish, and we're kind of walking toward each other. He's into my backing like two colors, and I was trying to bring him back into this bay where I could meet Phil and we could met him, and, and right as soon as me and Phil made eye contact, he broke off. Bink! 25 pound fluorocarbon snapped in half and my heart broke. I knew that it was a big fish. It was it had to have been at least a 20 pounder and as colored as they get. And we both just started crying. We have fun yet, buddy. This is awesome. 
<laughs> Despite being crushed about losing the only char we had seen thus far on the trip, we knew that it wasn't by chance. It wasn't long before we found and started catching some beautiful hens. And finally, we caught one of only two males that we caught the entire trip. run colored up gigantic arctic char the coloration on these fish just is unreal so i had just caught the fish of a lifetime and was just completely in awe at the beauty and size of that fish and then something totally unprecedented happened sam hooked a fish that will go down in the history of fly fishing as maybe one of the greatest char of all time. Mucho backing. The most unbelievable, holy grail, gold, mega of mega fish of all time. 